Hello everyone. Um I guess we can start. Oh, thanks Brian. So my name is Adam Shamalik and I work on the Federal Docs which we get out last week and many thanks to Brian Exobeard who was who basically did half of the work with me, so that was great. Um so what I'm gonna talk about today is four things. I'll give you an introduction of the new site what it is, how it looks like. Um, then I'll talk about Antora, which is our built engine we use, some core concepts and how we can use it, and then something about contributing and the source structure so everyone knows how to make contributions and maybe if you're a working group or a team or someone you can even move your recommendation in there, and then some plans for the future that we want to do. So let me start with the introduction and I'll have some few slides and I'll just show you the site. Um, so about the sources and building. Um, we have converted sources to ASCII doc, which is a very simple mark markup language. And before we basically did this, the documentation was written in docbook, I think, and that was XML, which was really nasty to write and we didn't get much contribution for some reason. And so we, or basically the people before I joined, were figuring out like what to use and ASCII doc was the best option. I think they even considered Markdown and other things. But ASCII doc was one of the things that was basically the best. And in the end we used Antora, which is a new built engine with an active community that basically takes the sources and builds a static website. And you'll see that in a minute. So, I apologize for this slide. I think I have never written so many words on the slide, but uh, it was late. Um, so, about the navigation, we've built a clear navigation structure that kind of scales well. So I say that the information architecture has been designed in a way it scales e extensively. And this is important because we want to accommodate many different things on the site. So for example, we have the user docs, but we also have docs about the Fedora project. And we can also find working groups and teams in Fedora in there. And I'll show you in a minute how, how, how that looks. Um, yes, we work on translations because this is important because we have community around the world. Um, this is in progress, but we alwa already have the language code in the URL. And I'll talk about the end in the future section. And there is one new thing that's called quick docs. And these are basically, <laughs> yeah, and these are basically docs with a specific purpose, describing how to get into to a specific goal instead of describing features. So if you, for example, see a documentation of, I don't know, HTTPD, and you can see all the configuration issues all the configuration options like this does this this does this this does this but it's kind of hard to start with so this will tell you for example how to use the web server in this particular way and how to get with it like how, to, how to get to it and there is already an effort porting various wiki pages and other resources into these quick talks and you'll see in a minute that we need a better UI but that's also one of the future things all right, so let's see the let's see the documentation. And I'll try to speak in the mic here. All right. So hope you can see that right. So this is the new website. It looks like this. The homepage is quite simple, simple looking, but I think it has everything we want. So there is the user user documentation in the top, and then the community section. And for example, if I want to see documentation about Fedora 28, I just click on it and I see all those, basically those three guides we already always had. So that the release notes, I can click on and just Wi-Fi is failing me, but it'll get there eventually. I get the installation guide and the system administration guide. And now my Wi-Fi just died. All right, there we go. I can also also show you the quick docs, which are kind of messy. So these are like all the ones we have, and now you can see why we need a new UI. But they basically describe like end-to-end -end things. So viewing viewing logs in Fedora, for example, or how to create disk partitions and stuff like this, or installing Java. 
So these are the user documentation, and we have the two active releases here, the quick docs, Fedora Rawhide, and this will be the link to the old documentation back to, I don't know, Fedora, whatever, I guess one. And here is the project documentation, so Fedora project, Fedora council, and these two sections about engineering and mindshare, which are basically the two major groups in Fedora, and if I open Mindshare, apart from some information from what that is, I can see Mindshare team. There's not much, there's just one for the community operations, but basically this is the space where we can list multiple working groups or teams we have in Fedora that are doing Mindshare, and they can have their own space here with their own menu and everything. And basically the same structure in engineering. And then there are some other links like Google Summer of Code and Outreachy Docs, which are actually external link. So that's how the website looks like. Oops. And now let's have a look at the Entora. So that's the build engine that we're using to build the site. So conceptually, it's very simple. We have the whole site, and it's made out of components. They call it components, and a component is basically a space in the docs with its own menu and a set of pages. So we saw, for example, the comops page that was a component, or we saw the Fedora 28 documentation that was a component. Even the quick docs are a component now. And this is basically all you need to know, but there, there is one more level of complexity, and this is more these days, like everyone likes to call things modules. So this is completely different than modules we have in Fedora. This is completely different than the modular way of writing documentation. This is just an Antora terminology. And basically, it's a section of the component that can be split into a separate repo. For example, in the Fedora 28 user guides, for example, there were three books. And each of these is a separate Git repo that can be owned by a different group, for example, but they get composed into the single space with the, with the single menu. And when we build the site, and this is quite interesting, it builds, they call it virtual catalog of all pages. And that's this thing, which is version, component, module, and the page. Oh, by the way, I haven't mentioned that components can be versioned. So let me show you. I forgot about that. So if I have the Fedora 28 docs, for example, this is one version. And here in the upper corner, I can switch it to another version, Rawhide F27. So that's basically what the version is, component module. And you can use this to either build the menu or to use ex internal links across the whole website. And this will get still the same even though if you, for example, move the pages in the component a little bit, this will always work. And the build is from, it looks like this. We have many different Git repos with the source, again, owned by different groups. For example, Comops, Modularity, Quick Docs, and there are the three guides. And we build it into a single documentation website. And in case you're curious, this is the link that gets you to the list and also to the build scripts. It's very easy to build. I'll show you that later as well, maybe. And by the way, I'll sh share the slides with you when I'm finished. All right, so that was about Antora. And now let's have a look about contributing and how the source is actually organized. So we are using Git to store the sources, to store the sources, and we want to use similar workflows to software development. So if you want to make change, you basically make your own copy, make the change, and then send a pull request. And this is useful because someone else can make a review, make comments, and it makes basically a little bit less pressure on the contributor because they are not actually pushing the content themselves, but they have someone else reviewing it. So that's always good. And this is the source structure in the in the content repo, and I have built a template. That it's on this URL you can see, and basically the most two interesting parts are these pages, and this is the navigation, this is the menu definition, but you also have images there, and some metadata and things that support the build scripts, and. 
this is the root is one of the modules most pages have just one module because they're in one repo and the default is called root but you can have multiple ones even like in one repo or spread to another repos so let's have a look at the template and I'll mostly show you the menu definition how it how it looks like so so this is the repo it's on Pager it's Fedradoc slash template and all the document all the information is in the readme so there's the structure it describes what it is I even have a recap of what component and module is because that might be confusing from the beginning and one of the nice things about this is that you can build it very easily all you need to have is a is a container runtime so for example we are using docker and we have two scripts one for build and one for preview and if you run it it will just run the container in the background builds the website and starts a local web server and you will just see the site and you can do this with the individual repos and you can also do the same thing with the whole website if you want to have a preview so I, I think this is one of the good steps here and I promise you to see the navigation structure so if I go to files and I open modules this is the default module and I have this nav adoc and these are the page IDs and you might notice they are a little bit easier here they don't have all the components in there because I'm referring to the same module to the same component but I could use the full version if I liked and it's basically just a list it says xref the name I want to see in the menu and this is just basically a list that defines the structure of the website so if I build it it looks like this and these are the five pages so I have the index page this is the nested thing which is defined here and that's how you basically can define the structure you want without moving the sources or changing the page ID so even if you if you want to reshuffle the menu completely all the ex internal links will keep working all right so right now if you want to make a contribution and I'll talk about that in a minute o also you need to go to this URL which is our Pagger build repo and there is a list of all the sources and then you just go to the repo and make a contribution but what we plan to do is an edit button it'll be on the right corner and just like click that it'll get you to the git repo and you can make an edit and just click a button and it'll submit a PR for you um, this is this needs to be done in Antora it's supported for github and two other gets I have I, I don't think I remember but if you host your sources on github it'll work already we need to make the change for Pagger upstream all right so let's talk about the future and there are few things we want to work on automation is the big one we want to have capability of building PRs for preview so if you submit a PR you will see in the PR the whole site with your change this is almost done I think we have the pipeline set up I still need to finish the image but this should be weeks um, we also want to build the whole site which is run na right now manual process but again if we do any change the CI will rebuild it and deploy it and we probably want some tests still need to think about this translations I've mentioned translations already so the URL is final no changes in there and we have some testing project in Zanada which is the translation thing and yes we are making progress in there and it's definitely something we wanna we wanna do very soon it's one of the highest priorities and quick docs so this is the thing we might need some help um, so as you could see quick docs have the menu on the left with all the pages listed and that was kind of crazy to navigate right so we might want to do something with I don't know tags search so if you're kind of person who can help us that would be great probably we want to build something like stack overflow or use something that exists that can provide this kind of experience and search 
So good news is that the Antora documentation already has a search, so we know it's possible. We just need to somehow integrate it with the federal website and they will have search and this should be even useful for the quick docs, I guess, as a as the first step. And we want more contributor docs. So if you're a working group or part of a working group or a team in Fedora or SIG, you're very welcome to move your documentation in there. So for example, I know Fedora Infrastructure or Fedora Relange have their own documentation, can be very easily moved there and you get your own space on the page. You can have it in your own repo, in your own place in the repo, your own rules for contributions, making changes, and we'll just build it for you and publish, which I think would be useful. With it, uh, for example, with the modularity project I al also contribute to. And with this, I think that's all from my side. Are there any questions or concerns? Yeah. Would you like a mic? Uh, first of all, of all, thank you for all your work with Antora. I know it was uh, hard work. Uh, I was trying to test myself, and my first question will be, saying we are moving from ASCII binder to Antora. How it affect the way we were working before for writing documents? Because uh, the test is different, but I don't know if we need to, before we have to define the topic map, YAML, mm -hmm. and then to add the document inside the YAML, in, in the YAML structure, and then the, to write the proper ADOC file. Mm -hmm. So how is this n new way different from that way? Yeah, that's a very good question, thanks. So that's something I haven't mentioned, so before the doc book, well, between the doc book and the Antora, we had something in the middle that was called ASCII binder, and that's basically Brian Exabelt's work, so that was also great. And it was also using ASCII doc, for the documentation, but to build it from multiple repos, it was kind of tricky. And also when you defined the page, you had to do one extra file that basically described all the files in there and then define the menu. So right now it's, all you need to have is the page files and the nav adoc, which is the adoc file with the list of links. And those links define all the structure and that's all you need basically. And all the information is in the template repo I showed, so that should be very clear. Uh, Otherwise, I'm very happy to help on IRC. Thank yeah. you. I have just another question, sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, the other question is, uh, because I want to port uh, several six uh, websites to the documentation side, yeah. so how this will work? I mean, I should host it in the SIG uh, Pagure, and how I reference it in the documentation Pagure. Very good question. So you basically can host it in any Git repo you want. It can be Pagger, it can be whatever. And you can put it anywhere in the repo you want. Again, you just need to have the structure with the structure of of the template, sorry. And if you go to this URL, so this is the Fedora docs, and yeah, it's messy, but it's just a click here, and it's an easy URL, it gets you where you need to go. So this is the main build script that lists all the repos with the sources, and in the files section, and I might even make it bigger for the projector, is this file called site.yaml. And if I open it, it lists all the Git repos we use as resources, with all the branches in them. So that's how you basic that's how we reference the repos. So basically you just let us know that you want this included or even send the PR if you like. I think opening an issue is is fine. And all we need to have is like a clone URL that's publicly available, the name of your branch, and if you have that in a separate path. So for example the comops have a directory slash docs. You can do anything you want. We can also specify it here, so that way it's not just interfering with your other code. Yeah? So let's say I, I, I'm playing around with this and I wanted to do a preview build on my own laptop. Is, is Antora already available in Fedora or how do, I, how do I actually build on my own laptop? Very good question. So we don't have Fedora, uh, Antora packaged in Fedora right now, but there is a upstream container image that has all the things you need and we made it in a way that 
we have two scripts in the repo one is called build and one is called preview and what it does is just like runs the container with the build the site for you first time it pulls the container from the upstream and then it just like keeps working and this is just a container with a web server that makes you the preview so that's basically all you need should be very easy and it works on linux i just did it on mac so that way we can attract contributors like using different should basically work anywhere where either a container runtime is or i think you can even install antora on any system but yeah so it's very flexible in this regard yeah Thanks. Thanks. Okay, I have uh, one question. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the documentation is now locked in Zanata for translating. So when this uh, change? I think that would be best answered by Brian. Let me <laughs> give him a mic. <laughs> Everything I'm about to say is extremely ignorant, so correct me when I'm wrong. We locked the doc book versions of the documentation at the request of the internationalization and localization folks. We have test pushed projects into Zanata of the ASCII doc. And quite honestly, I just need somebody who uses Zanata to sit down with me and tell me if this looks right so that we can send an email out to the localization list saying, go for it. Because after that, I'd like to work with Adam to do a test publish on a language. But I'm monolingual, so I can't actually do it myself. Um, well, I, I have successfully translated British English to American English. But beyond that, I am monolingual. And I have a credit. I can show you the web credit. But um, like in all seriousness, we need someone from the localization team who can look at what I've pushed into Zanata and say, this is sane. Um, because I've never had to use Zanata. Um, and I'd, what I would like us to avoid, if possible, is giving the localization teams a bad set of pushes and projects to work with. And then we're like, oh, well, yeah, those were all terrible. So we're going to throw all of your work away and ask you to do it again. Um, and that's kind of where we are with this. Um, I would be really happy to sit down with you like immediately after this or during Flock to get this worked out. <laughs> I didn't do much uh, much translation work, so I'm not sure if I'm the correct, uh, right person. But uh, I could look uh, who, uh, who is in your translation uh, group and uh, see who uh, who is in uh, I don't know who is the admin of the group and. Uh, I mean, let's just work it out. Uh, so okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, one thing, uh, one more thing, uh, just one enhancement for the for the page. It will be good if the page has uh, some link to um, contributors guide. Mm -hmm. That's something we are working on, and I think it should be coming in a few days, right? I think there is a, a talk in Flock about the, the the user guy or the contributor guy, mm -hmm. something like that. Durham, yeah, there was a yeah. Durham, but, but I did a. I, yeah, it's, uh, it's different. Sorry, I just confused yep. the both. But two things that should make you happy. I did a Fedora classroom this Monday, and it's recorded, <coughs> and it should land on YouTube on the Fedora channel. And I just walk through the whole workflow of contributing. So that's one option. Another one is we are building a contribution guidelines or something like with all the steps and it'll land on the documentation page so it'll be just like self-explanatory but it's not there you're right and it's coming right any other questions yeah we have one there so is the format actually ASCII doc type or AS ASCII doc so the format is ASCII doc it's built by ASCII Doctor, yeah, because which is, is somehow extension above ex ASCII Doctor. It's actually, it should be like ASCII Doctor 2.0. So I'm, that's why I'm asking. So doctor. Right. All right. So then it's ASCII Doctor. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make this clear. That probably you should make it clear in the docu documentation. And the second question is probably Thanks. on Brian: Is ASCII binder dead or not? Would you like a mic? <laughs> Sorry, thank you. 
Um, for those of you who don't know, ASCII Binder is a project that was written by our good friends in OpenShift. And it is used to build uh, static sites for documentation as well from an ASCII doctor formatted set of repositories. They designed it to solve some very specific problems around a single documentation set, trying to build it for three different flavors of a software project. Uh, it is not dead. Uh, I do not know that it has much active contribution because it's currently solving all of the OpenShift requirement set. Um, it did not meet our requirement set, and that is one of the reasons that we looked at Antora. Uh, but that upstream, as far as I know, is in the same, I'll say, maintenance phase tail end as it was before. And inside of Fedora, there, inside of Fedora, we still are using it right now with the budget website because I haven't had a chance to convert that. And we're still using it with, no, that's it, just the budget website. Yeah, I'm asking because I packaged SK Binder for Fedora, so I'm asking what was it, was it, what is the future of the package and uh, if it will have some future and if it will need maintenance or not. Or <laughs> I direct you to uh, Harrison on that one in terms of its future and whether it will need maintenance. I know that they're supposed to be looking at Antora for OpenShift, but I don't know that they've had the resources to do it. I don't expect you will be doing a lot of work in this package. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks for all the questions. Um, if we have some more. Yeah, so one um, additional. So when Entura will be packaged in Fedora and uh, yeah, what, uh, what does it mean? Because looking at the Docker file, it's based on Debian and so on. I don't know yeah. if we want to use it in Fedora. So yeah, that's a very good question. As long as we have someone who would like to package it for us. So this is Node.js, so we need someone with Node.js and I see Jared maybe is volunteering now, so. So I've started the process of trying to get uh, all the dependencies for Antora packaged up in, in Fedora. It's a non-trivial thing. I think I've packaged 60 or 70 Node.js packages so far just to get the dependencies in so far. And I don't seem to be making you know significant progress and getting anywhere close to, to, to the Antora package itself. It's something I do in my spare time when I've, you know, I'm sitting on an airplane and have nothing better to do, that sort of thing. But, uh, but it is going to be a long, hard slog to get there unless we just bundle all the dependencies. And and that sort of thing. But at least about the container, um, as part of the CI, I'm building a Fedora-based container that will use Fedora and Node.js package, and it will just like install the Antora from npm. But otherwise, it'll get just like through our stuff. So that's 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 the first step. All right. So any other questions? If no, thanks everyone for coming and enjoy your half an hour early lunch. This is the only talk that does that. <laughs>